So, uh, what can we expect from uh, John, Donald Trump during his uh, two days in the United Kingdom? To discuss that, I'm joined by Matthew Oxenford. Uh, he's the UK and Brexit analyst at the Economist Intelligence Unit. Bonnie Greer, uh, economist at the New European. Uh, Robert Olds, who's director of the Bruges Group. And uh, Cass Mudder, uh, who's written a new book called uh, The Far Right Today. And uh, Bonnie Greer, we're watching Donald Trump there. I mean, He's, I thought he wasn't going to say anything much while he was in the UK. Well, you know, I was thinking the other day that if he had a cartoon series, I would really be a big fan. He's incredible. Um, when you, uh, when Trump says he's not going to do something, you can pretty much think the opposite will happen. And I guess people should have been really prepared for this, but he always tries to pull surprises. He loves that. Well, do you think it helpful for uh, the Conservative campaign to have that uh, intervention from Mr Trump? Well, I think that Donald Trump is generally unpopular in the UK, and having Trump in front of uh, Boris Johnson or even talking about the NHS, even if he's denying that he's interested in it in the first place, is not a good look for uh, the Prime Minister, even though he's still well, currently uh, I mean, uh, Matthew, I'm sorry. I mean, him, him actually intervening in that way, you think, is, is unhelpful? I think that he's saying all the right things, but I think just the pre his presence there is still uh, outweighs any of the right things that he might say, especially because he's still going to be in the country for two more days and is probably going to create several more news cycles. You see it that way, Robert? Not at all. I think Donald Trump is actually possibly quite popular. Remember, the Westminster bubble or the liberal media and the establishment aren't the ones who are going to decide this election. It's ordinary working people. And Donald Trump has a history of being able to cut through to voters who weren't traditionally Republican, that turned out for him working class voters. And if Boris Johnson is going to have a big majority or any kind of majority at the election after the 12th of December, he needs to get former Labour voters, working class people voting. And you, think, you think Trump Boris... worked, works with working class voters? In Absolutely, this yes, and it follows on from now. The majority of Conservative support is now coming from working class people, and Boris Johnson and Donald Trump speak to them in ways that middle class establishment people don't really appreciate. That's why Brexit happened, and that's why Donald Trump in is UK, in power now. In the UK, <laughs> uh, Donald Trump speaks to working class people. In the he UK. has a, his, people know that he's put unemployment at record low levels in the United no, no, States. No, talking about here. You have data yes. on that. Well, well, well he, I mean, he uh, reaches well, out. He reaches across. I, that he is he is enormously influential, and that's why one reason why we see him on the media so often. Remember, the middle class liberal media, media so are so the <laughs> ones deciding this election. It will, no be, way he's on the it will be the so red wall that needs to be torn down. We've we, we got, we got your book here, the, 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 the far right today, and you've so. got a Trumpian red hat on, on there. Now, A, do you think that uh, Donald Trump does have a sort of international appeal? And uh, is the people he's appealing to, is it fair to call them the far right? Um, as a politician, he is far right. He appeals to Republicans. 89% um, of Republicans voted for They're him. They're not far right. Though, um, and, and not all of them are far right, no. Um, and many of them would have voted for Rubio as well. I mean, they just voted for the Republican Party against the Democrat. However, it's a bit of a myth that it's the working class that voted for him. Among the, among the poorest two categories, the Democrats came in very, very strongly first. On top of that, the working class are not white. By definition, Definitely. there's a very broad uh, spectrum, and we all know that Trump the, increased his share of the vote among black very, and Hispanic very, in America. Oh, a no, very he small Absolutely level. Did. The data clearly actually, shows that. He did. You can say everything you want, but it's not f factual. On the basis of data, he, he didn't do election, better right? on Hispanic votes or African American better, votes. Didn't do better, but he increased it. Now for candidates. Barack Obama, no, are you he kidding? He didn't. He didn't. From do the it. previous Republican candidate. This, this is ridiculous. Like it almost is. every single thing is now backed up by data, and most of the data are actually in the other way. Like That's he is not the candidate of the working class. He's not the candidate of the poor, not in the U.S. and definitely he also not in Europe. Belt seats, which is in, in the United States, which is why this he, he, talk, he talked about. This doesn't much. matter. Small, small, no, it does small matter. matter. He, it does no, well, matter. He I mean, reached across. He reached matter. across. It it areas matter. were meant to vote for Hillary it Clinton. They voted for Donald Trump. It well, does course, matter. Well, of course, matter. famously didn't win the. Just like working class people matter. in the United States are now backing the Conservatives. That's why he's afraid of Joe Biden. That's why he's afraid of Joe Biden. That's why he's afraid of Joe Biden because. Joe Biden is the people who voted. People right. here have never heard of Joe okay. Biden. Yeah, oh, they don't have to worry about well, that. People are worried about their, their jobs. Trump That's why people, is afraid the, of Biden. The values well, of working on, class people are jobs, look, look, Brexit and security and Boris Johnson. You can't just, um, let, let's ask Matthew Oxenford here where he thinks uh, uh, Trump's appeal is and how you think that might play over into the United Kingdom. I think the UK and the US are both divided and in the UK 
more or less half the country voted to leave. And in the U.S., more or less half the country voted for Donald Trump. The people that uh, Trump appeals to are very similar to the people who voted leave and are now drifted towards the Conservative Party here. That constituency exists. Well, that's in... a majority, so that includes a lot of people. But it also know. polarizes the other half against you. So it's a very slight majority, depending on exactly who votes and how they vote and how those votes are distributed and how that vote translates and, and into And would seats. you characterize it as a, quote, working class vote? I think that um, a lot of it breaks down along cleavages, along educational lines. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people who are more educated are working in less, uh, uh, less highly paid jobs. So it isn't necessarily that people who are hard scrabble living on, uh, pay from paycheck to paycheck are the people who are voting for Trump. But at the same time, there are cleavages around education and some broader idea of social class. I think it's an insult, actually, to the people of the UK. I've lived here for three decades to say that somehow they're falling behind the president of the United States because uh, he speaks to them. That's never really happened. He speaks about the issues he, that that's matter, never jobs, really security. That's never that, really these, happened. These are the key issues no, that are affecting people. That's finish? one reason. Can I, you can I speak? You can, you can, can, I speak? You can come can I speak? in in a moment, honestly. Only one more second. Yeah. I mean, to say that the people of the United Kingdom are so uh, simplistic to fall behind the president of the United States, they've never done that. They don't do you're that. You're insulting them to they suggest... They don't do that. ...to suggest yeah. that they're not interested in issues Bread and butter issues, security and jobs. These are the key things that the Conservatives are campaigning on. It's what helped Boris Johnson get into exactly. office in the first place. It will help Donald Trump well, get re-elected in 2020. Donald Trump's... Yeah, uh, <laughs> Boris Johnson, we should remind ourselves, has yet to be elected. Exactly. Uh, exactly. Uh, <laughs> so we'll, we'll have to wait and see. But, I mean, on, on, on that specific... That, you know, there's no doubt about it, Britain is very tied to its 20th century history, to the idea of Britain and the United States, a special relationship and all the rest of it. Donald Trump, though, questions a lot of that. He questions NATO. He questions, uh, you know, it's America first. Uh, he questions how much, he's done this again this morning, how much America should be contributing to European defence. So, at one level, does that actually undercut what you're well, saying? Well, he, he supports NATO and was actually very critical of other countries, such as uh, such as Germany, who aren't, aren't spending he, enough uh, on their to own To quote defense. him this morning, he said, I'm, I'm uh, getting to like NATO more. That's as a, as a, a result, of, as a result of him calling out other European countries that aren't investing enough in their own defence and security, they've now upped the, their, their spending targets on defence. So he's been very, very but, successful. He has brokered some good deals with NATO, and NATO is a cornerstone of our, the UK's defence and that of the United okay. States. I mean, Cass, how do you, you, you see the connection between an element of... Of, of, you know, far-right populism, which is nationalistic, and, you know, internationalism, if you like, is supporting international bodies. Well, I mean, uh, Donald Trump is particularly focused on his own country by seeing America first the whole time, which is one of the reasons why various far-right parties in Europe um, are a bit sceptical towards him. They like that he has upset um, the liberal international but order. But others are saying that say. as well. I mean, Orban's saying that the... Uh... Orban plays much nicer with international organisations in the sense that, by and large, he votes with the EU, um, even though he doesn't always do what the EU wants them to say, whereas Trump has already for decades a very sceptical position towards Absolutely. all international and Absolutely. multinational organisations. Um, and that, that doesn't worry the far right that much because they're also sceptical about it. It worries pretty much traditional right parties um, in, in Europe. Your, your book sounds very interesting to me. I don't know it. But what, what Trump is new at, uh, it's not only nationalistic, and I think you probably have that in there, it's also a nativist. Right. It, his nationalism is being translated as something that has to do with some kind of blood and soil idea. This, this is hysterical. Is, this is just talking about... You can answer this in a minute. Uh, that this has to do with somehow one is innately something, which which is a lot of what his, his Stephen Miller, one of his advisors, is okay. about. It sounds like you're describing identity politics, which... Dis which uh, puts uh, various characteristics upon one's background. What is important is, of course, what's put in, inside people and what their values are. And values are amongst many people in this country now for Brexit and for security and jobs. And to call Donald Trump far right is simply hysterical. OK, Robert, you're going to have the last word today. So uh, thank you very much indeed for that. That is all from All Out Politics for today. Coming up, uh, lots more on uh, Donald Trump's comments as he arrives in the UK.